Hi there, Psycho Enthusiasts, and welcome to the next episode of Friday Psycho Best Practices. My name is Vasily Fomichev, and I'm a Psycho Technology MVP. In this episode, I'd like to talk to you about uh, restricting the type of data that can be selected um, by the data source field uh, in renderings or sub layout. So, this is very important for developers and architects building new environments, improving existing environments, uh, to inc uh, increasing the usability of the content editor and um, experience editor. So first, Sitecore provides a very helpful feature of um, allowing to set the root item, the start location, uh, for the data source navigation tree. So when you click the browse button on the data source tree in your rendering, you can specify the root folder uh, as close as possible to the items that you would be selecting so you don't have to navigate through the entire tree trying to find that location. And then the second feature uh, I'd like to show you guys is uh, uh, Sitecore allows us to restrict the types of items we can select. So this comes in handy in a couple of cases. So first, once in a while we'll end up in, uh, with a folder that has a list of items of different types created from different templates. Even though we try to avoid that as much as possible, sometimes it makes sense to put very closely related content items uh, created from different templates in a single location. Now in this case, by uh, specifying the type of item, by selecting the exact template that can be selected, we can validate which items in that folder users can and cannot select. Uh, now the second uh, time when it comes in handy is really any time we hit the data source button, uh, whether we select uh, the root item or not, um, always in that window that comes up in the prompt with the tree, and I'll show you in a second here, we have a folder expanded, right? The, ch the child folder expanded. Now we can pick one of the one of the child items. However, we can also pick the root node if we wanted to. So there's that element of human error that's also prevented by specifying the type of item that we can select in the data source field. All right, so let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So let's uh, pick a sample rendering. I've already configured some of its settings and what we want to do is first scroll down to the editor options this section is on all renderings and sub layouts and we'll scroll down to the data source location and data source template so the data source location setting allows us to specify the root uh, folder the top level for the uh, data source uh, field so we can only select uh, with this configuration here on this particular data uh, rendering uh, in the data source field we can only select items under this uh, location by browsing the content tree right uh, you might be able to uh, escape that through paths uh, xpath navigating up the tree but um, for simple browsing using the uh, UI, the Sitecore UI, this would restrict it to only items under the home location. And the data source field here is set to point to a sample item template that comes with Sitecore by default. So what this means is now we can only select uh, items created from the sample item uh, data definition template in our data source field. So let's see, uh, let's see that in action. Let's go ahead and go to our uh, go to our home item. Let's add that custom rendering. Now I'm doing it directly on the item, and in reality, you know, you'd, you'd want to avoid this as much as possible and, and modify presentation on the uh, standard data definition template standard values. Mouthful. <laughs> so, anyways, let's take a look at the controller rendering that we've just modified. And here's our data source field. Let's click Browse. And now notice uh, we're now opening at the home item instead of the Sitecore item content, right? So uh, we're now at the location that we specified. We can only select items below the home item here, right? Now notice that the first item, so what I've done is I created another template. Um, I've, uh, so this is a sample item created from the sample item template and I've duplicated it and created another item from the duplicate template. So notice how it's a little bit grayed out and I, I think in the previous Psycho versions before A2, A2 came with some uh, neat styling changes in the font but 
I believe it used to be more prominent where the disabled items, the items you couldn't pick, uh, were a little more grayed out so you could easier, uh, easily tell that um, those aren't valid options. But here you can slightly tell that it's a little, it's a little lighter the font for this item. And when I click on it, Cycro warns me that it's not a valid selection. And the OK button in the, uh, in the bottom right corner right here gets disabled. Now if I click on the sample item, the OK button comes right back because it is created from the sample item data definition template. Now the home item here is also created from the sample um, item data definition template. So to prove the point, let's go back and modify the data source template here to use oh, it's under sample to use the copy of the one that I created and let's see how our user interface changes now how that gets affected data source back browse boom okay now notice home is still at the top home is still selected by default uh, that is uh, the default Cycro functionality. Um, I would actually suggest changing that because we don't need to have anything selected by default here. Otherwise, uh, we're operating under the assumption if we don't select anything, if we cancel, home will be selected, right? So, but that's not how it works. If you hit cancel, nothing will be selected. So, um, Cycro, if you're listening, uh, probably, hopefully it's a quick fix. Um, let's, uh, it would be nice to. Uh, remove the highlight, the auto selection, because it's uh, it's a little misleading. So notice that the home is selected. However, it is gray. The font of the home item it is gray, just like the sample item. It's slightly lighter than the one of the new copy item, and we also get a warning at the top. It's not a valid selection. OK button isn't there. Now let's select the valid item, and we're back to the OK button being enabled. Warning is gone, and we can safely hit OK. So there you go. Uh, you can dramatically increase, increase the usability of uh, the data source field by specifying the top level, the top root, uh, the top folder uh, under which um, users are allowed to select items for this uh, data source field, and also specify the uh, data definition template, identifying the type of item that can be selected in this data source, uh, and that eliminates a lot of human error. So hopefully uh, you liked this video, and if you did, uh, give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and for more tips like this, check out cmsbestpractices.com, and uh, I'll see you next Friday. Over and out.